You're listening to the Pursuing Passion podcast with Make It Rain. The following is a recent live recording of one of our fundraising events. Welcome to the Pursuing Passion podcast, where living out your dreams with passion is not only possible, but made real. And now for your host, the authentic ball of inspiration herself, Marte. I'm like, oh, trying to get used to it. But my name is Marte. Welcome, you guys. This is the Make It Rain. Just, we're having a fundraiser. So I don't know if you guys know a lot about Make It Rain, but well, we're about service. And that last song I just sang, it's called Blue House. I just wrote it, and I'm going to go record it soon. And it's really just about, honestly, I lived in a blue house growing up, and I was living there since I was six until now, actually, I still live there. And that house for me represented you know, all these dreams and growing up and we'd paint the walls and, and everything was so stable there. You know what I mean? And then I got older and I realized as Jesus kind of cultivated my heart that stability in a house was never his intention for me or anybody else. And I realized that um, he's telling me all my dreams are going to change and they have to be in him and that I have to leave. And I was kind of like, no. Not my blue house, you know, I got to stay with the blue house. And it was like this, you know, metaphor for me, trying to cultivate my own life and, and bring about my own dreams. And here's Jesus saying, Mm-mm, I need you to step out of this house and be the person that I've always envisioned you as. And that's why I hear Marte, I'm a part of Make It Rain. It's just something that goes against the grain, but it's very much a God thing. And he always wants us to step out and follow him, of course, but to step out from what we've always dreamt of and take hold of his dreams. And that's what I've seen here in Make It Rain, just being apart for these last, I don't know, it feels like almost a year pretty soon. It's been just such a wild ride, all of us. And it's just been that time of all of us being challenged from what we knew growing up and what was certain. I mean, my parents were these rich, I mean, I look crazy, my hair is like all, but growing up I was really groomed and they put these foo-foo dresses on me. My parents were these rich people that always cultivated their kids to be these people that would make more money than them. And then I got saved and Jesus is like, "Mm -mm. I know you went to college and I know that was awesome and you got a business degree, but I want you to go do this. 
and you probably won't make a lot of money, but you'll be following me. Isn't that awesome? I struggled with it so much, you guys. So this just my said I have the opening slot here in Tim Bergstrom, who's awesome and from Nashville will be taking over later, but I'm going to just take you guys along my, my service journey. Not so much service in the world, but service to Jesus. And uh, when you love him, it's not really service. It's called love. <laughs> you just serve the ones you love. It just happens that way. So this next song is called Hate Me. And um, it's about when you finally discover that you're called to follow Jesus. And he's sending you to these really weird places that people don't always understand. And um, this person in my life that was really close to me, he came up to me, and he was just like, I hate you. And I was just really at a loss to know what to say. So I took my little guitar, and I had a Taylor Swift moment. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to go write about this. And um, I wrote about it, and this is what it sounds like. And I think I'm going to stand up just to really deliver well. Here we go. Hate me. cheat you what's up with this heart attack cause when I see you you shine like the brightest star how did this love fade away why do you feel so far so I sail away from you oh I sail away from you you don't need me to hate me like you do so i will pack my bags and fall in love with the truth with the truth i'm in love The times we shared Late nights of playing games I'd break your head But something happened I disagree That I'm the one to blame Now you're aiding me So I sell away from you oh i sail away from you you don't need me here to hate me like you do so i will pack my bags and fall in love oh i fall in love do you remember uh, uh, yes do you remember oh the truth the truth times we shared, late nights of playing games, I'd break your head. Thank you. Hey, Frank. <laughs> That's a song, um, when I was really called to just go out and serve the Lord, my brother, he just walks in my room, and I don't really know what came over him, but he just was like, I hate you. And I was like, well, that was unexpected. I'm just sitting here chilling, and you're going to walk in and say that? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and he just walked out. And I just went downstairs. I asked my mom. I said, what's up with that? Like, I don't know. Did I do something? What? And you know what? She really couldn't give me any type of, like, revelation upon the matter, but I went upstairs and I honestly just asked God, I said, God, what did I do? Because I really love this kid. He's my 
only youngest brother I've like I'm like willing to kill for him. I know that's not Christian, but you know your family. You just have that one person that you love, and he's that person I love him the most, even though it's not good, but I do. <laughs> and so I'm like, why? And God was just like, he sees so much of me and you as you walk out and serve, and it's something that he wants to be able to, like that's what he looks up to, but he feels like he could never get there. And I'm like, whoa, that's deep. I never thought it was that deep. And I just was like, well, is that true? And God's like, of course not. Anybody can serve me. It's just you see people out there serving and, you know, the people that are like just going on these missions trips or say someone is just a game changer in your city and you're like, can I do that? And honestly, you look at yourself and you say, not me. <laughs> that person is way too awesome or they just have way more resources or whatever. And that's just not true. It's not true at all. So that song is more like a love song to him saying, I know you hate me, but remember the truth about what God has said about you because you can do what I'm doing. And in fact, I'm not doing this in my own strength. I wish I could. And, and I think that's what's so special about Make It Rain is that uh, we don't do this in our own strength. <laughs> if we did, I think it'd be a hot mess and a train wreck. And uh, we just, we're so thankful every day something new happens. Someone else is giving of themselves or wanting to you know help out in some random way that we were actually praying about and we're like whoa god you're really in control and so i hope that today you guys get a little whiff of that this next song is a really honest song i hope i can be honest with you guys is this okay okay yeah so this next song is called deliver me and i was on um i know these songs really sound bad right hate me deliver me <laughs> this girl is crazy <laughs> but this next song is called deliver me i was on um a service trip and i had okay i'm just gonna be real we all dream of this perfect day where all the bills are paid all the kids are grown up and then all of a sudden we're gonna go serve god in jamaica because it's easy and that's just not true i had these bills and they were amazingly huge, and I had no job, and God called me out on a missions trip. And I was just like, this is unreal. You hate me. <laughs> Why would you call me to this? And my mom didn't understand. Like I said, my parents were really, like, money-oriented growing up. And I just knew with all my heart, it was knowing that I had to be there. I had to not work a job. I had to go, no matter what the bills said or how much they'd accumulate. And I remember not even being able to play the guitar, but I picked up my friend's guitar, and I said, Lord, I'm going to try to spit this out because I have to write this out. That's just who I am. I have to put it out on paper or sing it. And uh, I sat down. We were in North Carolina, and I sat down on the front porch by myself in the dark with a bunch of mosquitoes swarming my head. And I had nothing rich to say, but God, I need you to de deliver me. I'm out here serving you. You say you love me. Deliver me. And um, this song, I could barely play it at the time, and time has passed, and it's gotten a lot better, but the essence of, is, I love you, God, and I will follow you no matter where you go. But if you could, could you return the favor? I mean, I know you love me, and your son died for me, and if that is all you ever gave me, thank you so much. But, like, I'm really burdened, and I want to serve you, but you're, you're making it hard here by not delivering me. <laughs> and I made it hard on myself. It's not him that ever made anything hard. He made it easy, actually, but... This song is called Deliver Me. No matter what you do, I'll stay real close to you. No matter what you say, please have your way. No matter what I ask, if nothing does come back, no matter what I see, please have your way, please have your way. Each day, no matter dark or 
light I'll seek your face No matter dreams on old When all seems failing cold When hope is just a word Please have your way Please have your way Deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, oh God. Though this hurts, I put you first. I will wait for you. I see you here Deliver me from this I'll arise, I'll arise, I'll arise Oh yes, I will arise In you Thanks. I have one more for you, and then um, I'm going to turn it over. This last song, I went through the whole deliver me stage, the hate me. I saw the people turn on me. I saw myself tempted to turn on the whole plan that God had called me to. And I really, I'm going through all this because I don't think it's just a me thing. I remember, you know, really becoming, I wasn't born a Christian. My parents didn't raise me a Christian. I remember it was 15, and I came to God out of pure devastation. I was like, heal my heart, God. My parents are getting a divorce, and I hate life. And that's who I was. My dad was doing drugs. Um, my mom was just so mean to me because I look like my father. <laughs> Rightfully so. I do look very much like him. I'm like his twin in girl form, and we act the same. We're very charismatic, and we have the bad jokes. And she was so hurt by my father that, like, it would turn towards me because he was no longer in the house. So they're going through this divorce, and my mom's looking at me. I, I love my dad. I'm a daddy's girl, firstborn girl. We had this relationship that was strong. And then he started doing drugs, so here I am. I'm hurt by that. I'm trying to turn to mom. I didn't know God. And mom is, like, ready to pen me to a wall. She wasn't, like, physically abusive, but um, she was very verbal and had no shame in, in saying how she felt. And so here I am. She's mad at dad, but yet because dad's gone, I'm the one filling the void. And I like, I'm 14. I'm like, someone help me. You know, I'm like upstairs in my room. And, and what's funny, we had it all, like four cars, two houses. I was going to private school. My brother was raising up to go to private school. We're being bred to go to college and make more money. And for some reason, that just seemed like the plan. And I remember walking into middle school and uh, I was so mad that day. My mom dropped me off and I just hate it being around her. I didn't have anybody. I was playing sports and I was like getting in trouble because I was dragging girls off the basketball court and that wasn't in the rules. You couldn't do that. I just, I needed an outlet so badly and um, God saw me and that's what really got me. This girl, Brittany Ralph, I'll never forget her. She comes up to me and I'm like that angry kid walking into school like, don't talk to me. <laughs> and uh, quite the change, right? I'm like bubbly now. Who, who knew? But um, Brittany comes up to me and she's like, Marte, come to church with me. And I'm like, say what? Uh-uh, I'm straight. I don't go to church. Like, that's for the loser kids. And she's like, okay, whatever. She just kept asking and just, it wasn't overburdening. She's just like, hey, dude, come to church. And I was like, nah, I'm okay. Eventually I went and then all of a sudden life changed. It really did. I felt this peace that was so, so overwhelming. I had never felt peace like that in my life. And I remember sitting in a church like this. It actually really looks exactly like this now that I think about it, minus the lamps on the walls. Um, it's probably in the sixth row with Brittany and all these girls on my basketball team. And they're just going because it's a thing to do. They have no idea I've never been in a church in my life. And uh, 
just thinking about it, man, it makes me like tear up a little bit. But I remember sitting there in that sixth row. And I felt this guy comes on stage with a guitar and I'm like, here we go. <laughs> Everything I pictured. White guy with a guitar. He's about to do this. Uh, I just loved hip hop. I was like, why am I here? Like, this is a waste of my time. And he starts singing. And God, like, attacked me. Like, not in a vicious way, but, like, it just, like, flooded me. Like, you know, I don't know if you've ever been in the ocean, but, like, where I'm from, we have the beach. And, like, sometimes you can be standing there and the water just, like, comes at you. And you're like, crap. <laughs> I can't move. Like, I can't run from this. It's a wave. It's overcoming me, you know. And I remember sitting there and the girls are just chattering away. They have no idea what's going through Marte's head and, like, what I'm feeling. It's like this piece. It's like, I don't, I don't have words. And I remember going home that day and I was... I ran into the house. My mom was mad at me. I didn't know what to do, but I had felt something I'd never felt before. And I was like, how can I get more? It was like better than drugs, better than like boys. It was crazy. And I was like, mom, you have to come to church. I just was talking a hundred miles per hour. Mom, you got to go to church. <laughs> she's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, you have to come to church. It's, I can't go alone. And she's like, okay, whatever. It's just church. And all of a sudden, like my life just started changing for the better. And it wasn't easy and still isn't. And it never will be. And I just ask myself daily, and I think this is why I'm even talking about this, but am I selfish enough, greedy enough to live a mundane life where I don't listen to the call that God is calling me to do? And I let other people go through what I went through and never find that peace. Am I that person? Will I be that person? And his call is new every day. Sometimes it's as easy as just calling someone or shutting your mouth. That's usually my case because I talk a lot. But um, or for some of us, you're a financial giver and you don't even know it. And you're meant to give to make it ring. Or for some of you, you're called to go to Haiti when we go in November. Or maybe it has nothing to do with make it rain. This is not a make it rain ploy. They did not call me to get up here and cry for you. You know what I mean? It's not the ploy. We don't have a ploy like that. It just doesn't work out like that. But like, I just feel I'm nobody, but God is somebody special. And I feel like because we have a relationship, I can get up here and challenge you guys to think beyond the norm. If your life is ever normal and you're never waking up saying, honestly, this is what I say almost every day. Crap, God, how is this going to happen? If you don't have those moments in your life, I'm sorry, but you're not in faith because it's a fight. You have to get up every morning and those, those pressures are going to attack you because you're in a realm that you're not meant to be in on your own. And that's what faith is. When you step out there on this hand and it's God's hand and you're doing something that you never thought you'd do and this next song is called laugh and um I guess you know Kyle just gave me the, the go-to while I'm playing it or after I'm playing it whatever you guys feel like to do we're gonna just have a time where you can give to make it rain perhaps you're not called to go like my mom is definitely not called she's saved and my family's doing better my dad's off drugs and everything is tremendously 180 degrees better. It is ridiculous. My dad, we're all in the ministry now. I sing worship at church and my dad sings behind me in the choir. And sometimes I have the mic and I'm like dancing on stage because I feel liberated. And I look back and my dad's just like <laughs> this older black man, just like totally offbeat and like, cause he's a groover, you know? So everyone else is doing their like rigid beat and he's like grooving. And I'm just like, God, this is available for everybody. Let's do this. We're going to have a moment where you guys can say, Hey, I want to do this. And you can give from your wallets because it takes money to do this and we need your help just to be completely bold and honest. We need the help of anyone who has the ability to help. We wanna send people to bring that peace to other people. We wanna send people to build houses and to help people get out of dysfunction and we need the money to do it. And I mean, we're not expecting you guys to give us your savings, but if you feel led to do that, dude, no one's gonna stop you. In fact, God will honor you. And that's the thing when you give, I really want you guys to be encouraged because I give even though I'm the one being given to all the time. And that's weird, I think, when you think about it from a logical standpoint. But God has never held back from me for giving. Like, I've never been at a loss for giving, ever. I've always been honored by the Lord, whether it's through, and I've never asked to be noticed by people. It's just, who cares? God honors you. So I, during this next song, it's called Laugh, and it has been the culmination of what serving for me has really been. It's been this journey of, like, laughing 
while I'm in faith at all the lies and the things that try to hold you down. You're like, dude, no, God has my back. I've seen this enough. And I've been in this position enough to know that God has my back. And I want you guys to start to dream of what it looks like when you serve. You know, we're doing a podcast and we're selling shirts and we're really grinding to change this world. What does it look like? You're, everyone in here is meant to be a game changer. What does it look like when you start to, to change the world? And um, we're going we're gonna to have a time of donating. I'm going to give a few dollars and I'm a part of the team, so don't even worry about it. Let's just all do this. And this song is called Laugh. I want you guys to really reflect, pray, ask God, say, God, what do you want me to give? Maybe he'll say nothing. Maybe he'll challenge you to give more than you ever thought you would. Maybe it'll be less. Who knows? But when he gives you the word and it's not going to come in an audible voice, it's going to be a thought. Hello. Go with it. Why not? What do you have to lose? He's God. If you give your whole wallet today, dude, you could walk out of this building and find a $100 bill. I'm not saying it'll happen that way, but why not give him a little trust? Step out on the edge a little bit, okay? The song is called Laugh. <laughs> Friend that I know he's got my back When I fall, fall short, he feels my lack I know it looks bleak, I know you hear doubt But we're not giving in, we're gonna ride this thing out Let go, with fear you're frozen Step out, see faith explode and we shout Yes, we're chosen, we laugh Cause provisions in motion praise you All of my, all of my days will praise you All of my, all of my days praise you All of my, all of my days praise you It's time to laugh It's already taken care of laugh It's already taken care of laugh Cause it's already taken care of life it's time to laugh It's already taken care of laugh It's already taken care of laugh It's already taken care of laugh Shut your mouth, you stupid lies We will maybe for time So the part and the point to rule and shine Every dream that we have will stay alive Cause nothing's impossible with him on a side of trust you all of my all of my days trust you all of my all of my days trust you all of my all of my days trust you i will trust you all of my all of my days trust you all of my all of my days trust you all of my all of my days trust you it's time to laugh it's already taken care of life. It's already taken care of life. It's already taken care of life. I provide all your needs. Do it faithfully, even while you sleep. I'm working, come close, see, and rejoice in me. Confide in me. Know that while you believe, you'll see my glory. It's time to laugh. It's already taken care of life. It's already taken care of life. It's already taken care of life. Life. It's already taken care of life. It's already taken care of life. It's already taken care of life. It's time to laugh. 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 It's 
time to laugh. It's time to laugh. It's time to laugh. Thanks, you guys. Well, thanks for allowing me to be myself and be raw and, and to represent Make It Rain. Up next, there's Tim Bergstrom. You're listening to the Pursuing Passion Podcast, a product of the nonprofit organization Make It Rain. Visit us online at www.helpmakeitrain.org.